Hi there, uh, traders. Now, everyone hear me okay? Just a quick shout out. I just had to reinstall uh, a few different things. So I just want to make sure you can hear me and I'll get started straight away. Okay, how's that? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, all right. Okay, guys, now what I want to do is, is just run you through the, um, the Fund and Trader program, just give you a bit of a run through of the rules and then come back and just sort of show you what I think is the, is the best way to get through the actual uh, practical assessment. Now, we do have uh, a lot of traders on the program. So let me just um, start from the very beginning. Now, if we do come over here to the MyFX Trading Hub now, all funded traders get access to the, uh, to the MyFX Trading Hub and all access to all the resources. Okay, so what we do have is you'll come to this each day and you have a bunch of resources to get uh, your head around the market, your head around the upcoming events. Um, obviously, one of the key parts is uh, looking at the upcoming events, connecting the market, technically and fundamentally and looking for the best trading opportunities. All right, now let me just, because there's a few things to go through here and this MyFX Trading Hub page is a key resource for all funded traders going through that practical assessment. This involves the capital management side of things as well as the upcoming events. So let me just, just quickly just give you a brief overview of some of the rules that I see people are confusing themselves with. Okay, now when we do look at the um, um, <clears throat> the practical assessment, now all you need to focus on is, is really this first table. Okay, it has the uh, the account balance, the starting balance. So for the hundred thousand dollars, the maximum trade size is three lots. Okay, you've got your daily loss limit, um, your weekly loss limit, and your maximum loss limit. Okay, everything is nicely bagged up. Now as you increase, as you make money your trade size increases as well. Now, one of the key things is uh, we get a lot of questions like, okay, what leverage can I use? Well, leverage is absolutely irrelevant in this situation. It's capital management based on your account balance and your trade size. So it's not 100 to one leverage, it's not 200 to one, it's not 50 to one, okay? It changes as, as you go through the program. So that's all you need to sort of think about as far as your trade size and your account balance. Now, this is one area, as I mentioned, some traders are getting a little bit confused with, you know, leverage and trade size. and Like, don't worry yourself too much about that. Okay, so then we've got some, um, to achieve all the performance requirements, okay, you need to follow the rules of engagement, right? So you've got the table at the top here, then you've got the, the set structured rules. Now, this is very important that everyone understands this. So the scaling plan and draw up protocols and the maximum, these first two um, are quite critical. Uh, and then I'll come back down to the economic data and the currency pairs in a second. So just coming down to the trade size scaling up. All right, now, as I mentioned, this uh, trade size scaling up draw up protocols explains the process for increasing your trade size. Okay, it's very straightforward. And the maximum trade size is the cumulative sum of all open positions and pending orders. Now, if you are starting out on the, the 100K account, you've got uh, you know, three lots of open positions. If you have any pending orders in the market and they get triggered, you are breaching the limits, right? Now, let me just tell you about limits and drawdowns and these sorts of things. When you are a senior trader in any bank, and I always worked at Citibank for 10 years and CBA for seven and a half and TD for almost three, the um, situation is you are given day or you are given limits. Okay, I was gonna say daily limits, but they are usually given to you uh, and assessed, say every three to six months. But you have you know what the limits are. And the rules around the limits, okay, do not exceed the daily maximum weekly or maximum loss limits. The rules around the limits are very clear. If you breach the limits by $1, you are sacked, okay, on the spot. They will grab your coat for you, 
walk you out the door, you don't even get a chance to say goodbye to your friends, right? This is how important it is. So when people say to me, oh, look, I'm only over the limits by a couple of hundred bucks, well, that's sloppy. It's, it's, you, want, you want to manage our cash? That is very sloppy. So make sure you're abreast of the, the lost limits. Now, one of the key things about lost limits, okay, and this is, the, I tell you what, this is exactly the same as the, uh, the banking institutions, right? You have to have a stop loss order attached to every open position. Now, I don't, I don't care if you're scalping the market or whatever strategy you're using, but having an, an open position with no stop loss order is a, is a set failure straight away, right? What you're not protecting yourself against is the market, right? In this current environment where we have a specific lunatic like Donald Trump, okay, um, you've got Kim Jong-un and, and uh, Putin and all these other things going on. There are so many international left field events occurring that they could actually strike at any time. If you don't have a stop loss in the market, the account can be taken to zero, right? And that's a big management risk for us. So if you don't have a stop loss order, that's an immediate, uh, your, your account will be disabled and you will have to start again, right? And this isn't like, uh, preschool, right? This isn't learning in school where you get two or three opportunities. The rules here are very clear. Now, when you come down to the daily loss limits and the weekly loss limits and the maximum loss limits, make sure you pay particular attention to what they are, right? So then you can assess your trade size for the opportunity around that event, okay? And the daily loss limits um, are very important now, if you come back up to the MyFX Trading Hub and you go to My Capital Management, okay, it'll take you to this page and uh, it will show you very clearly what your account details are. Now, I've just plugged in one of the 100K uh, uh, accounts and you can see very clearly here, all right, where the, um, where the key parts are. Okay, you've got your account balance, okay, starting balance, highest balance, lowest balance. You've got your available risk. All right, now this is a, uh, very important because it actually tells you how much risk you can uh, place on any, any particular order. So what you need to be doing is, is having a look at this each day. If you're going through the practical assessment, it will tell you how much available risk you have to trade for that, for that day, okay? You have the day, the weekly loss limit, maximum limit, and the maximum there as well. So it, it does tell you exactly how much risk you've got. So if you are breaching limits, you're clearly not looking at the, at the capital management. Now, to make this even um, easier, what we are going to do is actually drop the, uh, I think what we're going to do is drop the My Capital Management spreadsheet here into the MyFX Trading Hub. So you can actually see it every time you log in. It's the first thing you see. You can see how much risk you've got, and you can actually go about planning the trades. Now, if you do have a situation where your account is looking a little bit, uh, you don't have much risk, well, that's a sure sign that you need to decrease your trade size and make sure you don't breach the loss limits, okay? These account balances are very strict, so make sure you don't breach those limits. Otherwise, you will have to reset and start again. Now, so that comes back to the, uh, the overall rules on, around the limits. Now, just coming down to the trading economic data releases. Now, I know this is a bit of a painstaking process for a lot of traders, closing positions ahead of key data releases. But I can tell you what, after 28 years of trading and, and 20 of those in the banks, this is exactly what we did every day. It becomes a habit. It no longer becomes, oh, you know, I don't want to have to do that. It's like if you're too lazy to take the risk off the table and manage these major high impacting events, well then you're not ready to become a professional trader, right? We aren't just looking for people who are looking for a hobby. We're looking for traders who are serious about their trading and understand the importance around these high impacting economic data events. And once again, this is why we've got the uh, MyFX Trading Hub set up the way we do, okay? So we can actually show you and guide you into the key opportunities that are coming up. Okay, so you can see what the next major event is. And this is where um, you should be planning your trading opportunities around these as well. Okay, these are key fundamental drivers that can change momentum very quickly. 
Okay, so you, you should be aware of these and actually managing your positions around them. Okay, so then you come back to the, uh, the overriding rules around this. Okay, now the central banks, um, actually just one thing on that. So you can see here we've got a whole bunch of um, releases. All right, now if you look at um, you know, any, any of the free calendars out there, Forex Factory and a whole range of things, um, you will notice that there are a huge amount of um, uh, economic events. Now, I don't want you to close positions if you don't need to. All I want you to do is manage the positions, manage the risk around the absolute highest events that do have a major impact, right? So we don't waste your time and make you close on all these other things. There's some events that uh, are high impacting which aren't on this list, okay? If they're not on the list, you don't have to square up your positions ahead of those releases. Now, don't forget, with some of these events, okay, they are seriously banned events, okay? Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to trade the US non-farm payrolls. Well, that's one of the worst releases to trade because it's you've got three or four variables, okay? There's no liquidity at the time of the release and there's it's, it's too much volatility. So all the employment numbers, for instance, and a lot of the CPI numbers are too volatile to have a position going into it. Now, if you saw the UK CPI numbers a few days ago, it gapped about 60 points. Now, if you've got a stop loss in there, you don't get your stop loss done at your levels. So the whole aim of these um, squaring up your positions, your trading economic data releases, is to protect you from yourself or protect you from the market, right? The market is not necessarily always your friend. These are the prime events to get into, absolutely. But at the same time, there's so much risk around these releases, you need to be aware uh, and manage the risk around that, all right? So, so there's a whole bunch of things. Now, the central banks, okay, the key central bank components, interest rate decision statement, minutes of the meeting, inflation targets. Now, these key um, releases from the central banks are very important. They are the key fundamental drivers of trends, right? So you need to be abreast of these and absolutely um, you're not having positions running into these events. Now, even 30 seconds, um, we've got you can enter positions 30 seconds after the release, right? Now, that probably gives the market enough time to sort of shoot up 50 points, down 70, up 50, down 30 and, and work out where it is. But even still, some of the best trading opportunities can be um, you know, 12 to 16 hours after this event once the market has taken its time to digest what the central bank has said, and this is very particular for the Federal Reserve, um, and this comes back down to also include the speeches, right, specifically by the head of the central bank, right? These guys are the key figures of the global markets, and they are having speeches um, to tell you more about what's going on. They're very transparent, usually very friendly, like Mario Draghi. Now, what they are doing, though, if they do make something in their speech, they know they want a certain impact, they will say it. And that's, once again, where trends and those sorts of things can turn around. Now, we saw this uh, a month or two ago from um, the UK Bank of England governor, Carney, Mark Carney. He came out in one of his speeches and said, well, the numbers aren't that very good, um, which, which basically implied that we're going to have to do something about it. Sure enough, Sterling dropped about 400 points from that speech, right? So, that, and it wasn't in one day, but you get the idea that these events are very important. Um, but there's some other high impacting events, okay? You can trade some of the other ones, okay? Generally speaking, um, you can trade straight after the release. Now, that means whether you place a pending order or whatever you like to do, we don't want you just sort of guessing and having breakout OCO orders. Don't forget, in the back-end system, it, it picks up the order structure that you are setting up. So if you're going in with OCO breakout orders on the key releases, well, then that's that's a breach of the rules because you are guessing. We don't want you to guess. But if you know there's a, a side of the market which is very particular, well, then you can have an a, a order on one side of it, that's for sure, or hit it live. And all the other, <clears throat> all other economic data releases, as I said, if the economic data release is not on this list, you can have open positions, you can trade it, you can do whatever you like, all right? I've assessed the, the upcoming events 
And if they aren't on there, I'm telling you, you can knock yourself out. Approved currency pairs, well, this is pretty straightforward. Um, we are still working on, I've got the dollar index in here. We are still working on that. The, um, then we've got the permitted trade times, time limit, everything else is, is pretty hunky-dory. So as far as the, the main structure of what you need to know, okay, if you break any of the rules of the practical assessment, your practical assessment will be suspended. Okay, that's first and foremost. There's a reset facility. If you do breach a rule of the um, practical assessment, well, then you can reset the account. It starts at the account balance. All right. Um, now, the full capital management draw up profit structure. If you get down to the bottom of the rules of engagement, you will see the full structure of the profit share, trade size, and this covers the, the uh, practical assessment as well as the funded accounts. All right, so that's something you need to um, keep yourself abreast of. The um, All right, so coming back down to some of these other things. Now, I want to give you some tips on how I see the best way for you to get through the practical assessment, right? Now, one of the key things is, is understanding what you're looking at with the MyFX Trading Hub. Now, what you're trying to do is it's a combination of capital management waiting for the best trading opportunities and that's technically and fundamentally now we are we have been having an issue with the plugin here uh, the data analysis plugin um, hopefully we'll get a resolution to this very shortly but it hasn't been updated this week because of this uh, IT issue so what you're looking for basically right you've got your capital management say for instance the 100k account you're starting with three lots now to get through the practical assessment and this is the same with your limits when you're trading at the banks, you don't trade maximum trade size to start with. What you need to do is, okay, is, is trade, give yourself a buffer. So with that maximum trade size, I would be sort of suggesting if you've got $2,500 to risk, say, on the outset with the, um, the main accounts, uh, with the 100K account, well, then you need to basically trim your trade size. So you, say you're risking like 500 bucks. Give yourself three or four or five opportunities to get the ball rolling. And how do you get the ball rolling? Well, you basically set up looking for the best opportunities fundamentally and technically. And when you do have a matchup, now this was last week, if you do have a matchup of fundamentals and technicals, well, then that's when you get the best trading opportunities and that's what we're really looking for. Now, just recently, we've had a whole string of geopolitical events which has uh, taken a lot of the fundamental aspects out of the market and made it a little bit difficult. But your p persistence of analysing the market technically and then combining those, those fundamental releases and most importantly, the central banks, you will be able to identify the, the opportunities where we do have a general trend or short-term bias. And that's when these economic numbers can come into play and give it clear direction. If we get direction, okay, fundamental outlook but with the technical outlook then you have a really good trading opportunity and that's what we're trying to focus on we've probably been a little bit distracted here with the next best trades but these trading opportunities here is a general combination of technicals and fundamentals lining up very quickly okay now that can come and go very very quickly normal trending markets uh it will be very clear to you which way these major currency pairs are moving and that's what you need to focus on right so when you um, when you do are looking for the for a trading opportunity now, as I said, most like everyone has a different strategy. Okay, even if you've come through the Trades for Traders program, you've got the core foundation knowledge that you that you understand how the market works, how to execute properly, and understand the strategies to use. Now, what we're we're trying to sort of train you to do is recognize the technical setup with the current market bias and then the economic numbers, and that's when you have a cracking trade opportunity, right? So you're waiting for these opportunities. They aren't there every day. As much as I'd love to sort of say to you, today, this is the most best opportunity. They aren't there all the time. So you're waiting for the, you know, another thing to sort of consider is the trading conditions, okay? So make sure the trading conditions are good. I know the clock is ticking with this the, the monthly subscription, and a lot of traders that I see are over trading, trying to beat the next sort of payment day. But don't worry. I mean, if, if you've got a 100K account, 
right? Paying an extra month subscription to make sure you get through is much better than breaking a rule or breaching a drawdown limit. Then you've got that account for as long as you like, as long as you don't breach any of the limits and there's no time frame on it. So with that, you need to relax, wait for the best technical setups, as I said, wait for these uh, major events to give you some sort of direction. You get the direction and the technicals, now you're cooking with gas. Okay, that's, that's the most important thing. Um, one other thing as well, I know there's been uh, a common question that I've had from uh, a lot of traders has been the um, uh, looking at the, uh, like considering that the, the practical assessment is basically, uh, well, not really a waste of time, but I know you're going through a demo account and it's really because we don't know who you are. We haven't asked you for uh, 12 months um, trade history. We're just giving you an opportunity straight away to show us what you've got and, and stick to our capital management rules. And if you can do that, then we are going to fund you and get you started. Okay, but you need to respect the rules. Make sure you understand that stop losses are important. Make sure those drawdown limits are absolutely, uh, you stick to them, okay, um, and go from there. So now I've just got a couple of questions here. Now, the start of each day, now this is a very good question because if you've had a bit of a drawdown in one day, okay, so you come up here to the drawdown limits for the 100K account. Now, the daily loss limit is 1,250 bucks. Right, so we're going to give you an opportunity to have a decent crack. As I said, to me, the best way to get through this, if I was starting uh, and I was in an institution, so I had three lots, my first trade size would probably be one lot or one and a half. You know, I don't want to go anywhere near this. Okay, the daily loss limit though, this resets at 5 p.m. New York every day. That's when all the open positions roll over at the brokerage shops and all the banks. Okay, they call it the five o'clock roll. That's when, um, you know, the value dates of all the previous days changes to the next day. So if you have had a loss on one day and then five o'clock ticks through, well, then you do have a reset on your daily loss limit. Okay, but if you've had a, 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 a losses accruing greater than 1,250 bucks over the course from 5 p.m. New York to the next 5 p.m. New York, well, then that's a breach of limits. All right, so that's when that uh, that one changes. Um, yes, so, and that's it. So with some of these releases, actually, this is a, a, another question here about the uh, central bank releases. So just having a look. Um, okay, down here at the rules. Now, one of the key things, if we had a look, uh, we, we've actually already gone through the event, but we had the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, speaking today about, uh, you know, his testimony to Congress. Now. He has a general speech. Now, you need to understand the way um, the, these things are conducted. Now, they have a general speech. It's actually written um, either by the, the head of the central bank and they will sort of get their writers to come and have a look at it, make sure it doesn't misconstrue their message, right? So that is actually planned. When they start their speeches, that speech is generally printed on their central bank page. But the key part of the speech is, is not actually necessarily the speech because they are planned. It's the off-the-cuff stuff. So when you have um, central banks speaking, central bankers, it's the Q&A sessions that are the most important, okay? People don't ask them questions about their speech. No one cares about what they're speaking about. Sometimes they're speaking in, in uh, about non-economic events. Other times they are. But what the, the, the media will ask them every time is, what about interest rates? When are you, what, inflation's high, what do you think about that? If they ask any questions about inflation, uh, anything about employment, and definitely anything about interest rates, and they answer that question, that is a major event, right? So that's why we have on the, um, the re-entry after the head of the central bank speeches, you need to wait till the Q&A has concluded because this is what can happen. They can actually say something negative, answer a negative question, and this is what they usually do, uh, come out with a negative and then they say the positive and then the negative and it shoots up 50 down 30 up 40 it's all over the shop right so you need to be aware and these rules um i wrote all the rules based around the rules that we had in the banks and the rules that they had were there had been developed over say 30 or 40 years of people making errors and where the big risk was and those q a sessions from the uh, central bank 
heads, the president, the governor, the chairman, uh, whatever it may be, are absolutely critical. Um, yeah, so what you need to do is, and this, this is a good one uh, we've got here, um, so some people are trading weekly and daily time frames, okay? Um, so one thing that you need to understand is basically when you are trading, right, the guys at the banks, they do look at all the um, they do look at all the all the uh, time frames, right? They trade off all the trading decisions by the spot traders in the banks are trade off the one hour hourly charts, uh, right? So this is one of the key things that you need to be sort of developing your skills around understanding where the main decisions are coming from. Now, if you're a fund manager and you're managing, say, a longer term trading opportunities, which they usually are. They're more often than not looking at the daily charts because that's when they start to think about. They do less trades, but they're bigger, right? So you, you've got your daily charts and then potentially your weekly charts. Now, you can trade and make trading decisions off the hourly, weekly, or daily charts, whatever you like, but understand how the market works, right? This is one of the key parts of, of the actual program itself um, is understanding the, the way the market works and how the traders trade in it what they're looking at right now the other thing is as well one of the one of the key questions around uh the whole program is um can i run positions over the weekend absolutely not okay would you let me run your your cash over the weekend with the potential amount of natural disasters terrorism and the trump factor there's no way that you would be running risk over the weekends and i can tell you i speak to a lot of my mates who are still banging away in the banks there is no risk over the weekends. If you want to have a risk, they go and buy large options, which cost them a fortune, right? Because of the risk, the event risk over the weekend is way too much. Now, if you're trading daily or weekly timeframes, factor that into your strategy, right? And there is absolutely no difference. If you're running a, a, a big daily trend, there's no difference between running a position over the weekend and also just closing your position on Friday and open up on Monday. If you're too lazy to do that, well, that is just unprofessional. And once again, it's it's not allowed and you won't be in the program. It is just a simple thing to do. Close your position Friday, open it Monday. The same risk is there, except if anything, you've diffused two days of risk where anything can happen when the market's shut. And I can tell you, I've seen events over the last 28 years where it's gapped 1,000 points, right? You think a 50 grand or 100K account can survive that? I'm telling you it will not because there's no market in between, right? So that's one of the key things. So for the traders that have been through the uh, pro trader course, you know, have a look through the general structure of, of what we're doing through the technicals, um, trading, the trading process and all these sorts of aspects. That will give you greater insight into the, the way the market works, the way the bankers trade in it, how to manage your capital and all those other, other features. I know it's, it's a separate... Uh, part of the whole course, I mean, that's a separate part of the of the business, but it is there for you to um, to get yourself into if you if you want to get up the curve. All right, so that's that's pretty much it from me. the The main aim of what I want to do is is actually sort of just explain to you how important the rules are, where they fit in, and where this MyFX Trading Hub page. It's this is we're trying to guide you as best we can uh, with our level of experience around where the best trading opportunities are, how do you manage your capital the best as, excuse me, the best as well. And then you come back down here, you're looking at the major upcoming events. So you can see very clearly, okay, what events you need to be square for, okay? But not only what events you need to be square for, you should be thinking about this as well as thinking, well, what are the key events that I can actually take advantage of? That's what I, that's the way I look at these, but understand, if the data is up here. You need to be square that currency pair related to that release before it, and then you can trade after it, okay? So make sure you're aware of, of those rules. Um, yeah, so let me just have a look at some of these other questions. Um, yeah, you can, you can leave your positions open. So one thing about having positions. So as I just mentioned, you can't have positions over the weekend, right? But you can... Okay, you can have an open position from Monday 9 a.m. till 3 p.m. New York on Friday. You can have a position open the entire week. 
right? Whether you're asleep, awake, or whatever, you, whatever you're doing, that is fine. As long as you have a stop loss on it, and as long as that stop loss, this is your risk, as long as that stop loss isn't uh, greater than your available risk, you're going to be fine. Now, for some reason, people think, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not used to trading with stop losses, so I'll just have a stop loss 100 points away. Well, what you're doing is you're putting the, the balance of this account up on one trade. Now, that is unac unacceptable. I mean, if that was my cash and you'd actually put the whole lot on, on one opportunity, well, that's just stupid, okay? Because what, what are you trying to do, hit it out of the park in one day? Trading isn't about, it's about building capital around good trading opportunities. All of a sudden, you're methodical and persistent, and that's when you come into um, getting your account, okay, up into the, you know, up into the major draw-up areas, and that's where you're going to start making some serious profit, right? So once again, just when you do come into the Funded Trader Program, we have updated the rules here to actually, I think it was by about 50,000. So we get you basically making 60% of your profits at draw up one. Now that was previously, I think it was around 150,000. We've really drawn in the limits to get you motivated to get into the cash. So as soon as you're up 20,000, you're at 60%. And then uh, once you're at 160, you're at 70% and then 80%. This is where you're really gonna start locking in some cash in your own personal account, right? So the first part is, is just getting you, get building the capital of your account. So once again, you've got your maximum trade size here. That's all cumulative positions. Make sure if you are trading maximum trade size that you are certain this thing is going to go your way because otherwise you can have some deep drawdowns. You can either break the daily loss limit and even the, the weekly loss limit at the same time, which we've seen from a number of traders who are trying to just get there too quick. Right, so use, you, you've got to adjust your strategy. You see the opportunity in the market, come back to your capital management, see how much uh, um, risk you've got available to yourself, how much you've got left. Then you come back, make sure your stop losses are not beyond your daily or weekly or maximum loss limits, and then put your trades on. It should make you very relaxed, okay, because you know you're well within limits. And this is what the traders do at the banks every day before they go out to lunch or even they walk out of their office, right? They have stop losses in place with the other traders. So if something happens, their positions are taken out. And I can tell you, they never breach limits. Um, in the years, in the, in the almost 20 years that I worked at the banks, I probably saw two guys breach limits and they were sacked immediately. That's how important it is. It doesn't matter if you've been there 10 years or 15 years. No one breaches limits because they explain it to you if you breach the limit, you're sacked. And then you go and get a job somewhere else. They'll say, what happened to you at the last place you had? Well, I bre breached the limits. They'll go, well, that's just that's just unacceptable. And it'd be very hard to get a job if you were recognised for breaching limits. You could actually have all other issues um, in the banks and get sacked, but you'll get picked up straight away if you're a good trader. But if you breach limits, there is no coming back. In this situation, the practical assessment, we give you an opportunity because we know a lot of traders don't have, you know, 20 years of banking experience. So you can reset the account once uh, if you do breach those limits. But, you know, that can be a painful process. If you're close to uh, the profit target, for instance, okay, if you're in a $100,000 account and you're close to the profit target and you, you get nervous and start breaching uh, your trade size or your loss limits, well, then it's back to the drawing board. And that is just, you know, I feel disappointed for the traders, but the program is the program. It's to test your uh, tenacity and patience, especially when you get close to key levels, right? Just relax. Relax into the opportunity um, and let things develop. Now, if you are in the practical assessment, and we've had a lot of external uh, questions about this, um, and a lot of people say, well, you're just trading a demo account. Yeah, well, that's right. But because you're paying a subscription, it makes it, it adds to the pressure cooker, and that's what we want. We want you to care about the opportunity. Now, if you are still trading and you want to make some cash on the side with your trades, well, then don't forget you can access, and I've told this to a lot of traders, um, you can access uh, FX Blue's trade copier. Set this up on your own personal account, right? You trade the, and you put the EA on your, um, 
on your practical assessment account, it will copy the trades into your uh, live account. So you're actually making money while you're doing it. Now, this is what a lot of traders have been doing. It's because it's too hard to trade two separate accounts. So if you do think you can make money while you're doing it and you have got the cash, well, then I would advise you to jump on. It's a free download. These guys make a very good product. Um, it's one way to keep you in the practical assessment and making money at the same time. All right, that's another another extra sort of tip there. Um, no, this is all on MT4. So the platform, just got a question here about the platform. Is there uh, Ninja Trader? No, I think Ninja Trader is only for futures anyway or stocks. So the there's no Ninja Trader. This is all on MT4. Okay, that's the platform that we use. Uh, it's the widest used platform. It makes the most sense to use it. And a lot of a lot of traders have execution EAs like we do, uh, and they have other auto systems. I don't mind people using auto systems if they work uh, and they make money. Well, then knock yourself out. As once again, as long as you do not breach the the limits, I'm happy for you to um, you know trade your heart out. Okay, it's all about maintaining these limits in this box okay and as i said you're looking for the best trading opportunities you're utilizing the capital management ea so you can track your account make sure you're not breaching these limits and um and make sure you're not breaching the trade size all right okay um all right let me just have a quick look through the rest of these questions i think i've answered just about everything um Oh, one other thing too, yeah, one of the key parts is, now don't forget, when you are in the um, in the program, right, whether you're a funded trader or part of the educational side of the business, you do get access to the live trade zone, right? Now, this is a, a great answering board for all of our network of traders, um, whether you're looking for, um, you know, what's going on in the market, trading opportunities, or just testing your general trade ideas as well. It's a great way to keep abreast of what's going on. Um, so make sure you utilize that. And if you do have an IT issue, we'll jump on here and tell us straight away and we can actually get your, um, uh, you set up straight away. All right. So there's a number of different areas there. Now I'm, I'm starting to get a bit more active with posting, um, you know, specific trade ideas as I see them. I will try my best to post those in the next best trade watch list, um, as well. But uh, it's a little bit slow, so I like to sort of just get things posted in there as I can. The main announcements, okay, whether it's the uh, the FX Market Insight or some important information that I need to get across to you, I will post it in the announcements. Um, but feel free, obviously, any feedbacks or suggestions on the um, on what we're doing, uh, happy to do that. You'll see a lot more upcoming webinars here as well. With this, uh, this is really the start of a, a whole. Uh, series of, of educational and um, sort of guidance webinars that we're going to be doing. But make sure you do log in. When you sign up to the Funded Trader Program, sign into the, uh, the the trade zone here and get access and start asking questions. If you're not sure about things, don't be embarrassed. I mean, everyone's learning from different levels, but you can get straight into this straight away. And then you you're chatting with like-minded traders and you'll be amazed at what information you will get. Um, my general thinking is the more you put in, the more you get out. That's just, you know, the whole karma situation around that. So make sure you take advantage of that. It is there for your benefit. Now, one other key thing of using the trade zone, this, this, this is very important. Now, I actually do this all the time. Up here, okay, make sure you, you turn this thing off. If you, if you aren't trading, you haven't got positions, don't sit there with the alarm feature on because it will, if you've got it on your mobile phone or on your desktop, it will do your head in, right? It'll be beeping all the time because there's a lot of messages. Now, my general idea is I, I sort of turn it off, but when I'm at the uh, computer, I will turn it on, okay, and answer questions and, and check things out. But generally speaking, my default settings for the trade zone uh, for, the, for the main channels is off. Okay, the sound off. And that, that means I'm not getting bugged when I don't want to be. Now, you can easily turn that on, turn that off. Uh, I would get used to doing this. Otherwise, you're going to be sort of sitting in front of the markets the whole time. So it's a pretty easy process. And that will, as I said, save you um, being interrupted during your normal day. Uh, if you are checking positions and, and want to see things, come back and check out what the chat's been. Uh, of course, if you're looking for information and you're asking questions to traders or myself, 
well then that will be on. And as I've got down here, I do have the chat with each individual trader set to alert so I can actually answer questions straight away um, so we can keep abreast of what's going through the market. But that's, I think to me, it's probably a good thing because the last thing you need to be doing is you want your trading, right, to be just a part of your day, not to dominate everything that you're doing. And this can be quite consuming uh, going through the practical assessment. So make sure you do turn the trade zone off so it doesn't bug you. You can look for the key events when they're going to be on and prepare trade, uh, prepare to trade and trade the plan. Get yourself organised and go about your day. All right. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look through the rest of the questions. Um, uh, if you've got open positions and you're asleep, you need to make sure that none of these events come out on the currency pairs you have positions in. Uh, make sure you don't have positions in those currencies. Otherwise, once again, it is a breach of the key rules, uh, trading the data, trading the, trading the economic data releases. Now, we, what we want to do is we want you to give you, um, be able to trade these events. But as I said, we are protecting you from the market of major volatility where you can get taken out of position either on very low liquidity uh, or extreme volatility. Now, you may think it's uh, quite humorous, but I can tell you after many years, this is the major areas of risk. They are also the major areas of, of really good opportunities, but you can get into those opportunities after the event, and that's where the real cash is. It takes out the risk of the release, and then you can get in once you see what's going on. And don't forget, as I mentioned, some of these releases do have uh, a number of variables attached to them, employment numbers, okay? Employment change, the rate, average earnings. There's three events on this release. Okay, but as you get more experience, you'll become more accustomed to how these releases impact and how many variables there are with each one. All right, I think that's got us done, guys. I mean, I didn't want to drag this out too long. I just wanted to reiterate, um, just go through some of the key rules that I think some people are missing. Uh, and also make sure you understand the, uh, the My Capital Management, um, what that EA is going to do for you. It's a good checking point for your system. Uh, and also where the MyFX Trading Hub page ties in. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a bunch of drop downs here that you can go to these links or you can go straight to some of these at the top. But the main thing for the funded traders, uh, people in the practical assessment, is making sure you're abreast of the upcoming events and that will really guide you through your trading day. All right, that's it for me, guys. Uh, any other questions before I finish up? I'll just give you a chance to sort of type that in. I mean, the main thing that um, um, I, I see is as the main thing, as I, as I sort of mentioned at the start, the key to me, and this is, I've spoken to a few traders about this, that the whole um, key to getting through the practical assessment is the trade size. Right? Don't max out your trade size and every opportunity unless you are extremely confident because that's one sure way to start blowing up one of the limits. Okay, so build a buffer, start getting some cash, increase your trade size and go from, go from there. That to me is where the people who have come through successfully, that's what they've done. All right, so just make sure, have a think about the way you're going to strategy, you're going to strategize around getting into certain opportunities. I know there've been a bit fewer and far between the last couple of weeks, but if you do, do remain patient, stick to the rules, and wait for those really good opportunities where the technicals and the fundamentals line up, well, then you are going to be into a, into a traded account sooner than you think. All right. All right, guys, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, those traders that haven't been able to uh, join us, I know this doesn't suit uh, particularly the traders in the UK. Uh, if you do have other questions, by all means, jump on the uh, trade zone. You can ask me questions directly or ask uh, one of the other traders. I'm sure they will help you out. But uh, anyway, that's it from me. Have a great day, and we will see you uh, in the trade zone, and hopefully this uh, today's Aussie employment numbers give us a great opportunity to get some uh, dollars in the account. All right, chaps, we'll catch you later on. Um, oh, just sorry, last one before we go. Edgar, if I had pending orders before economic data releases, I need to cancel. Um, well, that's actually a good one. If, if they are on this list, you can't actually have an order in the uh, market, but, but some of these 
you can actually trade after the event. So you can, if you have got pending orders in the market, you can have, uh, sorry, let me just go down to this because it's actually a pretty good question. If you have got pending orders in the market, you can have them on. What we don't want is to see is, is like guessing, okay, OCO breakouts. If you have a pending order, say on the downside of, of a pair that has a good technical level, um, you can keep those orders on. Uh, this is this is all the um, all other high impacting data releases. The the data releases that we have are the banned ones. You need to be square these, right? You can't trade these ones. The, the employment numbers, CPI numbers, until thirty seconds after the release. So I can tell you after the UK CPI yesterday, that would have worked out for me extremely well. I got a great retracement. But all the other ones you can trade uh, straight after the event, which means you can place some pending orders in the market. Okay. Good question there, Edgar. All right. That's uh, that's it for me. As I said, you can catch me in the trade zone. Send me an email or, uh, or give me a call on the phone. All right, guys. Hopefully that's been uh, helpful for you. And, uh, yeah, we want to make sure we can get as many of you guys through this program as we can, get you making some cash for yourself and for us. That's what it's all about. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the trade zone. Cheerio.